Hey guys, it's Jewel here, and uh, I'm just heading to both of my gardens today um, to check things out, to do a little harvesting. I know that I don't have a lot. I kind of looked at them a little bit when I was walking my dogs, but um, there's definitely a lot of maintenance that I need to do, and I was just gonna kind of take you for the ride <laughs> while I do it, and um, just like show you my reasoning behind some things. and. You know, one thing with YouTube or blogs, a lot of people will just write down and talk about what's working for them, what's going good, what they know. Well, I had a lot of missteps in my garden this year, and I think I know why. I think I planted just too early, and I planted early enough that I got a lot of things going, but we had some late frosts. Um, I managed to keep all my plants alive, which I was so happy about. I'm like, yeah, I'm an awesome gardener. I was able to keep everything alive. <clears throat> but I think it just backfired. And a lot of my plants just didn't do as well um, as I hoped. I don't know if that's what happened. Um, that's the only thing I can think of, though. But I'll show you. I'm gonna go all right, so I'm just going to go bed by bed here. Um, this here is a flower bed that I have. I had zinnias and... Um, wildflowers and um, snapdragons and stuff like that as I figure out where I'm gonna put stuff for fall because I want it it's time to start planting um, I mean some things should have been planted like a week or two ago but um, I think I might just go ahead and wipe this out I had planted this here so that my squash and cucumbers and things like that would pollinate better that didn't go well at all I had like no pollination I'll talk about that when I get over to where my squash and zucchini are, but um, I feel like it was just a wasted bed this year with the exception of, you know, it looked pretty when I came in. But I mean, I see all these butterflies and bees and everything, but they sure didn't do their job <laughs> this year. And I didn't hand pollinate. Um, and part of the reason why I didn't hand pollinate is because I honestly didn't have a lot of flowers. That's where I kind of go back to, maybe it was me um, planting things too early that kind of stunted not the growth but stunted its development and maybe the development of flowers ultimately if anyone has had this issue please let me know in the comments you know I want to know um, in you know other people's experience if they've they've done that too planted early and just didn't get a lot of flowers um, on their plants but uh, anyways on this first bed though a couple things that I didn't do right but that are going good is I got a couple of um, volunteer tomato plants. I got three of them actually. Um, I need to stake this one up. I've got, I wish you can see that. I've got some, oh, there we go. It's hard to do this with this camera. I've got some tomatoes growing there, you know, and they're, they're small. I think they're going to get a little bit bigger. I have no idea what kind of tomatoes these are. I don't remember what I had planted here last year, so it's gonna be a bit of a surprise. Um, but what I'm gonna go ahead and do, and I'm gonna start doing it with all of my indeterminate tomatoes anyhow, is I'm gonna take the main stem and just go ahead and top it off, just cut it off, so that all of the um, energy goes into <laughs> The fruit that's on there now and um and any buds that are on there right now this is only going to grow so much longer so i'd rather get the fruits that are on there if that makes sense so i'm going to cut this and tie it up and then i've got this other plant down here that needs to be staked and tied up so i'm going to do that now and i'll be back with you in a second all right, so I have staked up these three tomatoes and uh, I just use the little rubber tomato ties like that. It's simple for me. I have used the Velcro in the past too. I like it, but I think it's a little bit more expensive. Um, so I, to recap, I, I staked them up and I um, uh, cut off all of the main stems so that it won't grow any further. It'll just ripen the fruit that's on there and produce the fruit. So now on to my tomato bed. So this this garden here, I only have one bed of tomatoes, and it only has Roma tomatoes in it. And um, that's the this is my bed. This is my tomato sauce bed. So I've been like canning tomatoes um, to make for sauce as we've gone along. But um, if you recall, plum tomatoes or Roma tomatoes, they are determinate. 
so they aren't going to continually grow so a lot of these i've got like one tomato left or or some of them have none left so i can go ahead and pull those um, but i'm just waiting for all of these to um, be red enough to uh, to pick and then i'm gonna get all these out of the ground and i'll have an entire bed to work with so yeah that's it so i'm gonna get the ripened fruit off of here and i will be right back to you all right so i got 14 tomatoes exactly <laughs> um which is kind of what i was expecting i probably have maybe only another no more than 20 tomatoes still left on the vines um i do know as a little factoid for making marinara sauce you need about 20 to 25 tomatoes for a uh so that's a pint no quart for a quart like a normal size spaghetti jar so um yeah so i have a little bit of ways to go actually i have a lot more in the house so i can make at least one jar of pasta sauce with this um so look at this a little sad this is my sunflowers i um i wanted to let them you know get i like these kinds so i wanted to let them um you know go to seed get the seeds and save them for next year because i've got other ones that totally didn't they're like huge I, I gotta show you you know what let me show you right now sorry i know i'm all off track here oh. i got the biggest sunflower and it hasn't flowered i mean this thing i don't even know six it it could be 12 feet tall maybe here it's in order for you to see it i gotta walk further can you see how tall that is that's that tall and look at where i am that's so tall it's like 12 feet tall and uh no flower i mean i, I can see it but it hasn't opened so I, i've never seen one that big so obviously i've been growing it for a while i've never seen one that big that hasn't opened up I'm like what the hell so i don't want to grow that again i think that is a mammoth but i've grown mammoth before and they've never done that so but these other ones, I like. All right, I gotta lock myself in because my dogs are getting here and mess stuff up. All right, so I've got um, my Brussels sprouts in here and um, they got a lot of damage from uh, cabbage loopers, but um, I had got it under control. It doesn't look like it's under control, but um, I think they did all right. I'm starting to see the um, broccolis, uh, broccoli sprout, broccoli sprout, Brussels sprouts growing. And I will, uh, let me actually let you see that. Here it is. You can see the little nubs right there, just starting one, two, three. That's one there. So they're starting to, to come in and, but they start from the bottom up. But that's pretty cool. So the only thing I'm doing with them now um, is feeding them. I just fed them the beginning of the month. Every month is when I do a big feed. I do um, granular and fish emulsion on everything. So I did that and uh, I just gotta keep spraying to get rid of cabbage worms um, that might arise, but that's pretty much it. Um, they don't come in until the fall, so they won't be ready then. All right, excuse me. So this is a huge source of disappointment. I only, I wanted to plant as much food, plant as much food as I could, a variety of food. So um, I didn't plant as much of everything as I probably should have. So I only planted two squash and two zucchini plants. Now I've done that before and I was swimming in them. I did them this year and I'm definitely not swimming in them. I've gotten exactly one uh, crookneck squash, which it was so beautiful and it tastes great, but I've only gotten one from this plant and then I've gotten probably three just regular straight neck squash um, from this other plant. I'm going to turn this around so you can see it. All right, so this is my straight neck plant uh, and I need to pick that. I'm going to harvest that now. To harvest it, all you do is you take it and you can just twist it. And that's off and that's that's beautiful. 
a really pretty squash. It's maybe a little bit big, but whatever. Um, but as you can see, let me set this down. As you can see, there's the base of the plant here, right? I'm looking around, I'm looking around, looking around, looking around. There's like no flowers. These are the only flowers that are on this plant right here. Um, that's it. It's like one, two, three, four, five, and they haven't opened yet. Um, so I'm getting like one squash every two weeks. <laughs> There's just no flowers. And then here's my, um, here's the, um, the crook neck. I think it's got even less flowers, but there's, there's some flowers there. But that's it, that's literally the only flowers that I have. There's just nothing else. So, when you don't have flowers, you can't hand pollinate. I do have some powdery mildew happening, I gotta take care of this. Um, and let me know what you guys like. I, I was thinking about doing the whole, the milk, um, using the milk on it, but I don't know. I've tried a bunch of different things. Let me know if you have a, a preference on what you like to get powdery mildew, how, how to knock it out. But, um, but yeah, so that's, those are my squash. And let me go over to my zucchini. So here are two zucchini plants, nothing, nothing at all growing. As you can see, here's one, there's the base, there's all my leaves, leaves, not a single damn flower to be seen. Um, here's like where the new growth is coming out of, I don't know if you can see that, but there's no, there's no flowers. This one here, this one I have a flower and I actually have a bee. Go ahead, you work. You work, you bee. You do your thing. Um, but that's it. I, again, I got one freaking flower. Just one. So it's like, how the hell am I supposed to grow zucchini and squash without any flowers? So I'm, I'm really frustrated. Um, anyways, I got a little bit, a few carrots here. They're being shaded out, so I don't know how well they're gonna do. But, um, Literally, the only thing that's doing well are these spaghetti squash um, that created this arch, which I really love. I love this arch. I'm so glad I did it. Um, I've got, I mean, I've just got so many, I can't even count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I've got one's. Oh, nine. I probably got 12 because I've got ones on the outside that you can't see from in here. But, um, so one little quick note. This one, this was my very first one. It is getting to the point where it's getting close to being able to be harvested. Um, so it's, it's got that yellow color. It needs to be, have more of a yellow color like that. Maybe not quite that bright, but more yellow. Um, so now, this is also a squash plant. What's the difference here? Um, beats the hell out of me what the difference is. I don't know if I started this later. I honestly don't remember. I'd have to check my book to see if I even put down, uh, you know, when I put it in the ground. But there's obviously a big difference because this, this plant had plenty of flowers on it. It still does. It's still producing. Look at all these flowers, you know, down there. Whereas these other plants just don't have flowers. The last thing that um, is going on really in this garden, um, noteworthy, are um, I've got a cucumber plant right next to a butternut squash plant. Um, and the cucumber, the cucumber is a pickling cucumber and it's been doing all of my cucumbers. I've got like, I'm having to compost them because I can't give them away. Everybody's like, nope, I get them from somebody at work or, or I already have too many or I don't eat them. My friend burps so she's like, I can't, I don't want them. So I'm like, okay. Um, so I'm literally having to compost so many of them because um, I'm turning all the ones into pickles that I can, but there's just, I'm, I'm swimming in them. So that's like my success story for the year. Um, but I will flip this around to show you that and the um, butternut squash. All right, so this is my pickling bush. 
it's just a bush type but i still put a trellis on it anyway because even though it's a bush type it, it does have a, a decent amount of uh, leaves and it vines so got some baby one there there got some good ones here oh we got a bunch down here some more growing so that's doing really good and i just keep coming out every day to harvest and this is my butternut squash now this is a mini butternut squash um they're like mini miniature sized portions this thing is just so darn cute man it's cute um but that's you know that's the only one i have so far so i'm hoping that some more i hope this isn't like the other squash where i just have one um i did it in this I did it in this grow bag, um, so I'm hoping that that's enough room for, and this is actually two plants too, I hope that this is enough room for them to do their thing. So I, what I might wind up doing, because I really want butternut squash, I might plant another plant, um, because I, don't, I, just, I just don't, I don't tr trust it since it's only producing one fruit so far. All right, that's the end of this video. Uh, I'm going to do another video in my other garden. So if you want to um, see that one as well, like the troubleshooting and, and all the new plans that I'm doing, um, subscribe to the channel to make sure you get all of my updates and all of my new videos. So until next time, happy gardening.